Good afternoon and welcome to the International Association of Wood Carvers, where carvers are helping carvers. Uh, today is February the 12th, 2022, about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I uh, just wanted to take a few minutes to uh, welcome everybody that's coming in. Uh, looks like we've truly become an international association because we've got people all over the world that's joining us. Uh, so thank you for taking time out of your day, wherever you are, and uh, coming in and joining us for an hour, hour and a half, hour and a half uh, to see what we have to offer today. Uh, today we've got Tom Wilkinson on. Uh, he's a uh, special education school teacher out of New Jersey. Uh, he's going to come on and talk to us about his uh, carving journey, give us a little demonstration on doing pierce carvings, which is a little something a little different that we haven't had on before. Uh, before we get started with that, I just want to mention a few things that are available right now to carvers. Uh, if you got on Wood Carving Academy, you can check out the workshops that are available. I just want to remind you that Bob Hershey is going to have a class starting on February the 19th on carving Easter bunnies. Uh, Bob's on with us today. He presented a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you're interested in that, make sure you reach out, contact Bob Hershey and get signed up for that. Again, I think there's a uh, rough out that you'll need to get. So uh, go ahead and contact him as soon as possible so you can grab that. Uh, Dave Stetson has a uh, class that's going to be starting on March the 12th. Dave's also on with us today. Uh, he's going to be uh, carving two figures. And again, those are also rough outs. Uh, the Butterfly Lady and the Gentleman Friend. Uh, so if you're interested in that, make sure you contact Dave Stetson. And then one other workshop they have available, uh, Janet Cordell has one that's uh, available now uh, that starts in May. So you got a few months for it. It's carving the uh, bighorn sheep. Uh, so reach out to Janet if you're interested in that. Uh, just want to remind you about the uh, CCA uh, Carving the Rockies that's going to be coming up in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, that's something new for them. That's going to start um, you know, on September 24th. That's the weekend of the 24th and 25th. Uh, they're going to have six instructors, vendors, and uh, CCA competition uh, there. This is the first anniversary of that. Uh, so make sure you try to put that on your calendar and attend that if you can. Again, uh, Healthy Knives is going to be there, Heineken Wood, and then Mountain Wood Carvers as far as vendors go. Uh, should be a good opportunity to uh, carve with some great instructors. Uh, and compete in that competition. So try to sign up if you can. Uh, Want to let everybody know we're going to be doing an International Association of Wood Carvers prize pack giveaway next week. Uh, we've been working on trying to get some things together for that. Uh, we're going to be posting a link for uh, for that giveaway uh, in our link tree, and we'll share all that on social media. So uh, make sure you sign up for that. Again, we just try to promote uh, these meetings and uh, do giveaways as much as we can. So that's going to be something that we're going to be doing next weekend. Uh, we've also got some healthy knives uh, that we're going to be do, doing raffles on down the road. Uh, but uh, wanted to thank them. And again, they're one of our advertisers here um, for sponsoring us and giving us knives that we can uh, do raffles and help us continue this, uh, this process. So um, as I said before, uh, today we've got on Tom Wilkinson. Uh, Tom is coming to us from New Jersey. Uh, he has uh, several different techniques and styles that he's going to show us today and talk about. Uh, Tom, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. At the end of the meeting, I'll talk about some of the upcoming coming presenters that we have coming up in the coming weeks. So, Tom, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for taking time out, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. All right. Thanks, Blake. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tom Wilkinson, again, from New Jersey. Um, so, you know, when Tom and Blake and, and Dave reached out to me, I was real really excited, a little nervous. I, I still consider myself kind of a new carver. Um, I got into carving about seven years ago. Uh, my father, Ken, who's on this call, he called me up one day. He goes, you know, I'm looking to get a hobby. I want to, I want to try and do something new, something different. And I said, well, he said, why don't we do some kind of like a woodworking class? So I looked up, um, you know, on Google, like most of us do. And I found American Wood Carving School. It's located in, in New Jersey. And we decided to take classes. And it's kind of a funny story because, um, you know, the owner of the school, his name is Jerry Citrullo, fantastic carver, even better teacher. And he actually worked with my father at IBM, you know, in the, in the 1970s. So it was kind of like a reunion when we went back there. Uh, the, so the, the school is a really amazing place for me to start. Uh, the community of carvers, you know, from beginners all the way to guys who've been carving 20, 30 years. It's just a wealth of knowledge walking in there. You know, you walk into the school and there's carvings everywhere. We'll have demos in, we'll have car you know, carvers come in and do some great lessons. Um, so for me, it's been, you know, an invaluable resource. And, you know, I, don't, I can't imagine being able to carve half as, half as well as I do now. Um, 
with that being said, I, I mean, like all of us here on this call, I'm sure we're sitting on a, on a Saturday night talking, Saturday afternoon talking about carving. It's definitely a passion of mine. It's every, every free moment I get, I'm, I'm carving. Um, you know, I'm a school teacher, I have a wife and two little kids. And at the end of the night, I need just the time to decompress. So I have a little workshop in my basement and that's, that's where you'll find me most of the time is just doing my carving. Um, so I, I do have a couple of, of examples of things that I've been working on that I want to show you. And then I prepared a little demo about um, carving birds that's something I've really been into in the past couple of years. Uh, so one thing that I love carving is, is bark. And Blake and Tom or Dave, I don't know if you could uh, switch over to the other view so I can get a, a look too. Um, but I just, this is my latest bark carving. If you recognize Chewbacca, um, this has been a really fun one. Now, when I do bark carving, I really like to leave a lot of the bark on the outside. And to me, I think the bark just looks really cool. So I, I try to leave that as much as possible and kind of make it look like the, uh, whatever the subject that I'm carving is, is popping out a little bit. So uh, Chewy was a really fun one. It's fun to do all that hair and other detail. Um, I do love painting my carvings, but I typically don't paint cottonwood bark. But with this one, I feel like when it was just one color, it was really washed out. Um, so I tried some different techniques. Uh, I, the, the fur right here around his beard and, and his face, that's all just the natural uh, cottonwood. However, the gray, I just used really a light gray and some white highlights. And then I just took some sandpaper and that made some of the brown come out. So it just helped blend in some of those colors a little bit, made it seem a little more natural. Um, so I was real happy with the way this guy came out. It was a really fun one to do. Uh, I recently did Gollum from Lord of the Rings. If you're getting the, the uh, theme here, I'm really into sci-fi fantasy, you know, reading and movies. So when I can incorporate that into my carving, I always try and do that. So Gollum was fun, kind of a little creepy. Uh, I, I actually made a video of him, um, but I'm trying some stuff on YouTube. So if you want to check out the video of how I carved it, you can always check him out there. Um, other things I do, I'm also, I really love learning about mythology and reading. Um, so I had this idea to do a lot more uh, mythical characters, but the first one I did was Pan. Um, I would like to do him again, kind of holding his heart, because anytime you read about Pan, there's always got his heart. But, I, you know, for me, when I, when I choose a carving, it's got to be something that I'm really interested in. I like, you know, like when I do, when I was doing this carving for Pan, you know, I'm always reading about it, watching little videos, uh, I don't know, it just, it, for me, it connects to the carving a little differently. Um, and it's just, I love learning about different things. So it's kind of like combining two of my passions. Uh, so another bark face that I'll show you is another endeavor. I'm trying to do some more female faces. Um, I really like the way this one came out, but I wish I didn't finish it the way I did. Um, as you guys maybe know, when you, when you carve bark, you know, I love the grain pattern, but sometimes when you put the finish on it, it kind of pops it out too much. And I, I feel like a lot of the detail and subtleness that I carved in this, I, I lost a little bit. Um, so I had been using the Howard's Feed and Wax uh, for most of my bark carvings, but for this one, I think it just brought too much of that dark grain out and took away a little bit. So if you have any suggestions about taking that finish off, I'd be open to it. But if you kind of see it, I have like a little crown of flowers and her flowing hair it looked, I feel like it popped more before I put the finish on, but overall I'm happy with it. And I'm excited to try some more female faces down the road. Uh, the last bark one I wanna show you is um, a bark house. So at the carving school, one of my friends uh, since moved, his name Frank, he took a class with Rick Jensen, which many of you know from his bark houses. And I'll tell you what, Frank didn't just carve a a bark house. He carved like a bark hotel. That's what this class was. It was amazing. And um, part, so part of the learning of it was, it's actually two pieces of bark. So when you look inside the windows, you could see through. Um, some people I know have been featured in the Carving Illustrated, will carve little things inside. And I, I think this, it comes out amazing. So I really would like to do some more of these houses. It was a whole lot of fun to do. Um, the joining it was a bit of a challenge. Um, my friend Frank helped me quite a bit with that. You know, I've never used a jointer before. So we use that to, to uh, put the two pieces together. But of course, you know, when you have a little gnome house, I carved a little tiny gnome to go with them. 
So this is probably the smallest carving I have. See if I can bring them up a little closer. This little gnome. I love doing little stuff like this, these little fun guys. Um, like I mentioned before, I have little kids. So I'm always carving, you know, little characters they're into. Here's a guy from Mario. Um, if you like Thomas the Train, I do like Sir Topham Hat. Some minions. Um, and every Halloween, I always try and do like a little monster or something. So I, I know one thing that, and, and Blake said it, that I, I like to do a lot of different styles of carving. And I, I feel like that's a, um, something that I learned early on when I started carving is just to expose yourself to as many different styles and techniques as possible, because things you pick up maybe using the power carver, you could translate into any kind of carving. And it's just, it really, it's, I feel personally, it's helped me um, get to the point where I'm getting more happy with the way my carvings are coming out. Um, another thing that I've been getting into is carving birds in the round. And the first one I did was um, kind of based off of a red-tailed hawk. I did this one in cedar that I found. So I think, I'm pretty sure it's red cedar. And this was a, if you've ever, I don't know, I, this is my first time carving cedar. It was really hard. And it was, um, it shipped quite a bit. So I had to be really careful, but I did this one. I roughed it out with a, a grinder, but I finished most of it with hand tools. So just mainly, mainly with, I carve a lot with my knife. Um, and I was really happy with the way this came out. Now. I learned a lot with this, with the laying out feathers, and I'll show you that in, in the, the carving that I'm going to demo. Uh, but getting all these layers is, you know, it's the most important step. You know, I, f I find when you look at a carving, when you go to start a carving, that the thing that you want to get to first is doing all the details. Um, that's how it is for me. I love putting the details in the carving. And I feel like with a bird, it's really important to get these different layers and structures down before you can even think about cutting in individual feathers. And learning that has been a big thing for me. So uh, that was one bird that I did. Another one that I, I recently finished was this in butternut. I did an owl. And I'm really pleased with the way this came, this came out. It took me a while. I put it down. <laughs> I probably started it, um, you know, it took probably about seven months to do because I kept picking it up and putting it down. And that's another thing that I found is, you know, I get a carver's block, I guess you can call it, and I have to walk away from my carvings a lot. So I always usually, usually have like three or four different projects going on at once. Um, once I find myself getting to the point where it's, I'm just not inspired or I'm, I'm having a tough time getting to something, I put that carving down, work on something else. And then it's amazing when I go back to it, it's like, I could just pick right up and, and start carving again. So this was a really fun challenge. Uh, I, I love the way the, the feathers are kind of overlapping each other. And I didn't realize bu butternut polished up this nice when I sanded it. So I was really pleased with that. So I'll just zoom in to give you a little more look at the, the details. So, all right, there's the owl. All right, so the, the next thing that I'd like to show you, and this is kind of the basis of, of the demo that I had, is the pierce carvings. Um, this is, I've always been really intrigued when I started carving, and I would see pictures of pierce carvings. You know, when, you know, I forget, I don't know the carver's name, but he does like wolves and uh, bears, and they're just, I was always so intrigued by it. I thought they came out amazing, and I love that negative space um, especially when you have it on like a, a blank background, like when you hang it up on a wall. Um, I, I always kind of look at different backgrounds. Like I have a, a wall that's gray and a wall that's brown or blue. And it really changes the look of the carving just by looking at the background. So when I, er, when I originally started carving this one, it was going to be a really shallow relief. And I had squirrel carved. And as I was digging back, I guess I kind of lost track of my depth. And I went through and put a big hole in the carving. So I said, you know, this is a good opportunity. A lot of times that's what it is. You make a mistake and you learn from it. So I, I, I decided right there, I would just carve through. I drew out some leaves and branches and using, a, I think I used a Dremel on this one and I just kind of went through and, and carved it. And I, I was happy with the way it came out. Um, I think it added for me, it's, it, I, was, I, I just love the way it looks. You know, I was able to really concentrate on some of the details on the squirrel. And the thing that 
I don't love is, is the leaves. And that's something that I'm learning as I'm carving too, is, you know, you spend so much time putting detail onto, you know, the face and the fur and getting all the textures right. And then I kind of left the branches and the leaves as almost like an afterthought. So it's almost like that last 10% of any job you do is always like the hardest, um, the yeah, hardest to finish. And that's, I'm really trying to focus on, on taking more time and getting those surrounding details. So I think it makes the carving look a lot more complete. Um, so this, like I said, was my, my mistake, but it kind of led me down this rabbit hole of doing more Pierce carvings. The next one I did, I designed a little more thoughtfully. Um, I wanted to do, I've always loved Robins and I wanted to do a Robin with some babies. And when I designed this one, I knew I wanted to have a lot of leaves put in there. And I knew I wanted to have the nest. And looking back, my own critique, I wish I, I positioned the mother a little bit so she was looking at the babies, uh, but I could do that next time. But I wanted to show you this one for a couple of reasons. One is I feel like the leaves came out a little different, a little more thoughtful. Uh, there's different layers and colors and it kind of gives it some depth to the carving. Um, I love the way the babies came out and I don't know how well the detail will come out on Zoom, but they're, they have really fine um, hair and texture that I love the way they came out. And with the mom, I, I, I was really, really pleased with the way I was able to carve that out. And the thing that, hey, yes. Yeah, it's Daniel from Grand Band. I'm just curious, what kinds of paint are you using for that? Oh, sure. I'm, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, that's a good question. Oh, all right, that's fine. Oh, thank you for the question, though. Um, the thing that the, the the difference between this bird and other carvings I've done since the squirrel is since I'm designing them to be a, a Pierce carving, I started using a scroll saw, um, and that has been a game changer for my carving because a lot of times the hardest part of carving is to conceptualize the shapes and you know, getting the outline of whatever you're going to carve done. And just by cutting it out, it, there's no tricks to your eye. It's, you know, there's a blank bird and I can just, now I can just carve that bird to the shape that, that it should be. Um, and and it's, it's, I found it's almost like a really good practice to do these kind of carvings. Um, so the, the wood that I use is these uh, basswood blanks. They're about three quarter inch thick. Uh, Tom, if you want to give me the metric calculation. Way to put me on the spot. What size was it again? Three quarter inch. So maybe like a couple centimeters. I don't know. But about a, about a finger, a finger, uh, finger width apart. So they're, they're fairly shallow. Um, and I've, I'm learning. It's really helping me learn how 19 to- 19 millimeter. Say it again. 19 millimeter. There we go. Thank you. That's for the international crew. Um, for, for me, it's been a really good process of finding the shapes um, and really using undercutting to help trick the eye so the carvings look like they have more depth than they really do. Because when you kind of look to the side, it's a really flat carving. Um, the other thing that I'm learning is when you kind of, and this is a little trick that I found that I'm happy to share, but when you look at the back of the carving, it doesn't look nearly as fragile as it does from the front. Um, and the reason is, because I, you know, when I carve it, I'm rounding all the, the leaves, the branches, the actual animals, and they, so they look more fragile, but there's really a lot of stability here. Um, and I, I'm also really careful when I do design, especially the one with like branches and leaves, there's always kind of a pattern going across and I try and do up and down as well. And that gives this carving a whole lot of stability. I've gotten questions in the past from friends and other people who've seen my carvings and like, how do you carve it and not break it? And the, the truthful answer is I do. I break them sometimes, um, especially when I, you know, some of the ones that I don't have to show you today, but sometimes I wasn't as aware of making that design as stable as I do. So that's just something now I'm, I'm keeping in mind is when I set out the design of the carving, I make sure that there's good stability and that's been really helpful. It's been helping me not chip out as much. Um, another thing is when I would cut these out, I would cut out really close to this edge of the bark 
And because I, I like I like the look of this, because it's almost like it's, it's a natural frame. And, it, you know, I know it's not an original idea, but I was always just drawn to that bark on the outside as the frame. And I was getting just way too close. So I'll, I'll show you with the demo. I've been leaving a good uh, couple millimeters just to have on the outside. So it again, as I'm working with handling the carving, using my power tools on it, it's got more stability, so it's not so fragile. Um, so I believe it was Bob that answered the question. I use uh, watered down acrylics on these. So I don't have a specific brand that I use. Um, kind of cheap, cheap stuff. I, like, I get it out on sale when it's on sale at the craft store. Um, and I do like the watered down. I typically just use like primary colors. One thing I always love painting, um, it's just I like mixing colors. I think it's fun. And I, you know, it's just something fun to do for me. So I like to mix my own colors. Um, I, the downside of that is when I do make mistakes and I do make mistakes all the time, it's hard to kind of match that color the way I had it. Let's say I was carving one night and then I go back to it the next day. It's really hard to match that color again. Um, so that's why I typically when I paint, I put the kids to bed, might be like nine o'clock at night and I'll, I'll, I'll get myself ready for like a marathon night of carving and painting. And this way I can, if, if I do make a mistake, the paints are out and I can just fix it up. Uh, but yeah, watered down acrylics. I use a hair dryer. I'll dry it out and then add more layers as I need. I really like a more washed out look for my painting. I know some carvers are really saturated with their paint and I like that look too, but I kind of go for a more subtle look. Um, at least that's what my attempt is. The difference I could kind of show you in the squirrel. Squirrel, I think I used, actually used oil on this one. So it, it definitely is um, a little darker, but I, I haven't really used oil paints in a long time. All right, any other questions before I move on to the demo? Um, I have a question. Do you do a SketchUp before you start carving or do, do you use clay models or how do you present, you know, start up with your uh, carving? Um, it, it really depends. I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, getting like inspiration from either pictures I took or a friend took, or I'll, if I need, I'll go on Google images a lot for, for different things. I do like to sketch them up before I carve, um, either, you know, on a piece of paper, I'm not the best drawer. So it's nothing I'm, I'm proud of, but just to get a rough idea of, of the layout. So I will sketch some things out. I've really been curious about using clay models because I've heard from quite a few people um, that, it just, it takes all the guesswork out of carving. And I really like that aspect of, of having a clay mock-up. So that's something that I'm looking to learn. It's, you know, as you know, it's a whole nother learning curve and tools and supplies to get my hands on. So, um, I, but I think that will be a big, a big help, even just to carve like a small version of something and then I can scale it up or down. So, uh, but as far as the, the Pierce carvings, um, I, you will typically find a model of like um, for the one that I'm working on late, the latest one, I'm doing a pair of cardinals and I found a picture of cardinals that I liked and it's not so much, I don't use it for the entire time, but I'll, I will lay out the bird in a position on the wood. And as you see, I have all this blue painters tape all around it and at that point, that's where I tend to do a lot of like the finishing design. So I'll have an idea and then I'll go in and draw. And again, keeping in mind for those points of stability. So I don't have it completely cut out now because another thing that I've been learning is with these leaves, the branch is really thin. And when it's done carving and hanging on a wall, it's not that big of a deal. But while I'm handling the carving and you know moving around, I don't want to accidentally knock into that. And I've done that a number of times, knocked off leaves and branches and things. And I just try to avoid gluing as much as possible. So I've been, um, lately what I've been doing is carving and then I'll go in and cut out all the leaves and then I'll carve them, I'll carve the leaves. Uh, but I think, yeah, drawing that is, yeah, I can't just 
imagination to do it. I have to see it out there, especially if I'm using the scroll, scroll saw to cut it out. Any other questions? Yeah, Tom. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you had a, uh, a uh, YouTube site. Yes. Yes. What was it? I'm, I can't find. I see. I see your Etsy site. Uh, okay. But, uh, what uh, do you have a different call name or something on your YouTube site? No, it should be the same. It's on, I have it, all my sites. Um, glad you brought that up. I probably should have mentioned that sooner. So I have an Instagram and Facebook, Etsy yeah. and YouTube, and they're all under Wilkinson Wood Carving. Oh. All right. I think um, Blake and Dave and Tom uh, will will probably put some links. Um, in, in the video when they post this or either on Instagram, perhaps. Tom, um, I just put all yeah. of your links in the uh, chat right now. Oh, yeah, awesome. I found it. You just take Tom out of it and just Wilkinson wood carving. I found it. I guess the, the algorithm isn't favoring me in it yet. So. Uh, okay, but yeah, the, YouTube, the YouTube is a whole, I don't know if, how many people have been making videos out there, but man, that's a whole nother learning curve. I'm trying to get my head around. It's, yeah. it's really fun, but uh, it's, um, a lot, a lot to learn there. So, be, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of the last video that I put out and I'm excited to do some more. Yeah. And that's, Thank it's, you. Actually, it's actually fun to do the video and, and it's fun to, to do this talk with you guys because it, it really made me think about my carving process a lot um, and, and the way I do things. And it's, it's really, I, I don't know, it's always something that's good to take, take a step back sometimes and be, be a little more mindful about the way you're going about your carving. And so this, this presentation has been a great way for me to do that and, the, and doing the videos as well because I narrate the videos and it, it, make, it makes me think about actually what, what, am I, what am I doing during this carving process and it's, it's been pretty helpful. So, um, All right, so for this carving, I, I've been, I love doing cardinals and I've given away as, as some gifts and I, I've had some customers who reached out to purchase a cardinal, which has been amazing. Um, and I, I love cardinals too. So I feel like it's one of the birds I do most. Um, I like owls and hawks too. So that, that'll be down the road. I'll do more of those. But for these ones, I was, I've been wanting to do a male and a female. Because um, to be honest, the male, the male painting isn't that complicated. You know, they're, they're red. They have, they have highlights and other colors. But I was really intrigued about the, you know, the female coloration. There's a lot of grays and whites and little hints of red all throughout. So I'm really excited to finish this one so I can get painting the, the female, because I think that'll be a nice challenge. So just again, to talk a little bit about the design, I have uh, two points. So I have where the head of this bird is and the tail. Now, eventually they'll be cut away, but for now it's giving me a nice stable thing to work on with my carving. And I have this branch going kind of up uh, across the middle and that's giving me a lot of stability there. And then I have leaves on either side. And it's, it's, you can see it because I'm already starting to undercut with the wing. But if I turn the carving over, I don't want to make it too blurry. But if I turn the carving over, you could tell that it's a lot more stable and full looking from the back. Um, and that's, I, I, I know I, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but with, when you do these kind of carvings, you want to really be mindful about having nice stable points to anchor your carving in. Otherwise, it will fall apart. Um, so going back to it, with the undercutting, it's gonna really help when I do carve this leaf, I'm excited for it, because I think it's gonna give a lot of depth to the carving. Um, and like I said, you know, when I started doing these, I had, the leaves were more of an afterthought. You can see the way I'm, I'm drawing them in. I have, I'm gonna have a, almost like a little, um, little boat, like as if the leaf was uh, curved up. So I have a couple like that. So there'll be some variations in the leaves. And I think putting that extra thought before I start carving is gonna help this carving look better when I'm finished because your eyes are first drawn to the birds, but I've, I can't tell you many people have said to me, wow, I really love the way your branch looked. Is that a real branch that you put in there? And to me, that was the best compliment because I had more fun carving the branch and painting the branch than I had carving the actual bird sometimes. Um, and what I, most of that is just texturing. Again, this is very thin carving. There's not much carving to do when you, once you actually start. So it's just a matter of finding the shape of the bird 
Um, I left the female rough carved. I didn't do any major details just yet. Um, I use all power carving when I do these. When you get these little blanks, it's all end grain. So there are a couple times, I love using my knife to carve and it's just so frustrating because you, you think you have the right pattern and all of a sudden the whole car, it, it just crumbles and it, it just gets really frustrating. <laughs> so I've been um, using more power carving with these and it's, it's so fun to use power carving and it really helps, you know, get, get my vision out a little quicker with these. So with the female, you can see that the rough shape, I always look for when I'm looking at the bird, you know, obviously the wings are something your, your eyes are always drawn to, the beak and the eyes, but the chest feathers are really interesting. And there's always little variations in them that, you know, when you, when you look at it from afar, it kind of looks like the cardinal's gonna look red, but when you get closer, there's all kinds of colors and shadows and other um, little depths that you, you might not always realize. So I, I take time when I'm doing the initial carving before I do any detailing to kind of look where there might be some shadows. So right here in the chest, it turns in a little bit on the underbelly. Um, and there's just slight, they're very subtle parts of this, but I think that's what gives the carving a little more life is when you have those little subtleties in the feathers. Um, and then once I start giving some more detail on this side, I can actually start defining them more and cutting and getting, sh kind of showing the pattern of where the, the, the chest feathers will be. Um, I'm gonna show you how I, I do the, the burning with this. But what I've been doing lately is I'll do a preliminary um, carve and then I'll do some light burning on it. And then I'll, then I'll paint it and actually go back to burn a little more. Because what happens, um, I believe, I think it was Bob Hershey, I think you were talking about this, when you do a, a light wash with acrylic, uh, you know, sometimes the color gets lost sometimes the, the wood, the grain will come out a little more and any of the detail that you put in just kind of disappears. So I've really been liking the idea of burning, doing a little bit of paint and then doing like a final texture with the burning. Because I think with a burner, it's the best quality of it is, is for texture. Now, if you're using pyrography and, and just doing a flat piece, that's a different story. But for me as a carver, the burner is, just a really awesome tool for getting different textures. Um, so with that, I'm gonna get my wood burner out and give you an example of what I need. So what I'm using is a, see if I can show you, the nibs burner. And my philosophy of burning is to go low and slow. It's like, you know, if you're making some ribs or something, you wanna go low and slow, right? So I, that's kind of my philosophy in everything in life. You don't want to drive with me if you like getting somewhere fast. I'm a real slow driver. I'm a slow carver. So if you ask my wife, I'm slow getting out the door too. Um, so with um, before I start carving, I got this tip a couple of years ago when I first started getting into burning. Uh, my friend Jenny, she's a, phen a phenomenal pyrographer and I learned a lot from her. And one of the things she, she told me is she said, you know, to keep your tools clean, to use a, it's a, I don't know the exact term of it, but it's a, a nail buffer almost. If you get a manicure, they might you know, buff your nails with it. I see a lot of heads nodding, so maybe we're good with that, Blake. Um, <laughs> so you might be familiar with that. But what this does is it's a nice, soft abrasive. You know, it's, if they use it on fingernails, it'll be fine for your tips. And when you burn a lot, it builds up carbon on the blade. And this is just a nice way to kind of buff the blade and, and you just kind of go with it. I go with the direction of the tool and I just kind of buff that carbon off and I'll see if I can get closer. It's, it gives it a really nice, clean blade. Um, I've tried using my strop. I know some burners will strop their tips and I do that, but it's really hard to get that compound off, off the tip. And then once I put the burner on, it stinks and I, I don't know what that compound is. I don't wanna breathe that in. Um, I've been using this for years and the same tools for years. It doesn't dull them. It, all it does is just scrape that carbon off. It gives you a nice sharp edge for cutting in. Um, so 
going back over to the carving. The, the tools that I primarily use, and I mean about 95% of the, the, the burning that I do, I use a skew tip. So just like your, your carving skew. And I have like a more, this one, this one I love. It's, it's real sharp, pretty thin, so I can get into little crevices with it. I have another one that's uh, semi-flat. And this one I didn't buff yet. So this might be a good way to show you all that black that's on there. You can just carve it up and get it nice and clean before you burn. And that's going to give you a really nice, clean burning. When that carbon builds up, it burns black um, and gets that color that you don't really want in the wood. Um, so yeah, I use these, these skew tips for a lot of my carving. And then I like these little shaders as well. So they're very similar. This one I had a little longer. You could see it's where I pressed it down a little bit. It's almost like an L now. This one is a lot more flat. This is this one I got newer, but I tend to press down with these a little bit and almost use it to like burnish the um, carving a little bit. So these, again, these are the ones I use majority of the time. And that's why I'm gonna show you what I do now. So like I said, with this Cardinal, um, I didn't detail this one yet. I just wanted to show you an example of what it looks like before I start putting the details. Um, at this one, again, I've kind of, with a really small um, diamond ball, I just kind of went in and gave lines in, giving the, the general direction of the way the feathers are lined up. Um, when you look closely at the bird, you know, we, some feathers are turning slightly across the shoulder, some are going over the chest, others turn another way outside, underneath the, the beak, it's, they're a little more ruffled. Um, so there's a lot of texture going on. So what I like to do is start with first those subtleties, like I was saying, then I go to a, the fine ball and get those, the, the shape and the direction of which way the feathers are going. And the last step will be to use the skew tip to give all those individual fine feathers. So I'll probably hit this piece a couple hundred times because I'm just doing nice, slow, almost like jazz. So when you, when you zoom in, I'll be able to show you that it's almost like stabbing the carving and it gives it a really nice texture, almost like it was real hair. And I, I found it's the same process of, of carving hair. Um, so if you're carving, I'll show you with Chewbacca. That's the last hairy guy that I did. Um, and I, I mean, feathers, hair, they're very different, but the similarity and the process of carving it is the same. So you start with the widest tool you have. I would use like a big number nine and I'll cut in the hair. And then I'd use a small U gouge, refine the direction of the hair. And then I'll go in with my small V tool and give, it, give those individual strands the details. If I went in first with the V tool, it would just kind of, um, the hair would look more straight and it, would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have those subtleties and, and curves that, that I would be going for like natural hair has. So, it's just, so when I look at feathers, it's the same process that I'm going over. I start zoomed out, I get the shape, and then slowly I build up to where that direction of the feathers go. All right, so I got my burner on. Um, like I said, I got low and slow. This thing goes up to 10. I don't think that's ever seen the light of day. I usually hover between one and four, uh, depending on what I'm doing. So the first thing I always like to burn is the eye. I carve these eyes. I love seeing bird carvers when they put in glass eyes. I think it's so cool. Uh, it's a technique that one day I, I hope to learn. Um, I think it gives the carving a little more interest. It they, gives it more depth. Um, but I also think it's fun just to carve the eye a little faster. You don't have to worry about using putty and all that stuff. And, you know, mess, I would hate to mess up putting the eyeball in. So the process that I like to do is I'll zoom in a little bit with you. As you can see, I have the eye set out and it's very, um, 
it's slightly rounded, but it's not completely round yet. I went in with a small, really fine tip and, and cut into the eye a little bit to give some shape on both sides. And I have the, the brow, I guess, is it a bird's eye, a brow? I don't even know, but where it would be a brow right above the eye. I have that overhanging and I'm gonna use the skew to really Tom, get could in. you pull down just a hair? Oh, sure. Sorry, man. No, no worries, thanks. Kind of lose, lose my place here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and just with the burner really slow, it's almost like using it as a knife, like a hot knife through butter. And I'm just gonna jab in, and I'm just gonna define around the eye, the eyeball. The other nice thing about doing these types of carvings, it's not mounted, and you can just turn the carving and make sure you're exactly where you want to be. Because this is the stage where you really don't want to mess up. You put all this time into getting it here. You take your time doing the details. All right. So with, with the eye started there, it's just the outline. And I'm actually gonna leave it and, and go to the feet a little bit, just cause I don't wanna keep switching. But typically what I'll do is I'll take this tip off and I'll put the, the, um, the shading tip, the flat shading tip and kind of burnish the eye. But I'll go back to that when I, when I switch the tips. The other thing that I like to do with the skew tool is the feet. Um, so I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see the feet a little better. Those are always, for me, once I can figure out the depth of the foot, the whole rest of the carving comes into place. So I'll start really grinding down and, and getting a nice round shape. But until that I, I, I am confident with my cut for, and the depth of the foot, then I can put in those back feathers and all the other, the rest of the carving it just seems to fall into place for me. So the feet are really, a really important part of this carving. Um, I don't, I'm not hundred percent satisfied all the time with the way these feet came out. Uh, these ones I'm pretty happy with. I'm, I'm trying, always trying to get better with this. So I have the general shape of the foot and I have it very close to the, the branch. It's, there's really no difference there. I have it sanded down. So the, the foot is attached to the branch. And then what I do is I use the skew tip trying to keep my head out of the picture. And I'm just gonna kind of cut under the foot, under the talon. And I'm gonna go just around it. So it starts to give it more, more depth to carving. It looks like the foot comes off a little bit. I'll do the same thing with this, uh, toe or talon and I'll cut under. And sometimes what I will do is I'll go back and carve away some parts. For example, on this one right here, I could probably give a little more depth. I can cut in under a little bit more, give a little more interest. So it looks like the, the toe is kind of curved a little bit more like that. Right now it's kind of flat. This way when I go back and carve it, it kind of looks like it's angled a little. So I'll do that all around the foot. And I'll give it that nice um, kind of cut away from the branch. So it's like two separate pieces now. And as I was just saying, I do go back and recarve. Um, this is going to be like a birch branch. It's kind of um, almost like a dying branch. So part of it is going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, have the white part of the, the birch bark. And then the under, I'll have wood underneath. So I feel like the, I, I could probably carve down some more here and that'll help the foot stick out a little bit. So the detailing is very important, but it's also one of those things where, you know, it, you might find you have to give a little more attention to some of the carving. All right, so the foot's carved. And then once I have that sticking out a little bit, and then I can start go back and, and using the burner to color. So I'm just gonna hit one more spot and that's a really tough angle to get into. I, if this leaf weren't here, 
I could have this undercut no problem with, with the power carver, but I don't have a tool, I don't have a bit small enough yet to get under there and, and carve. So I'll have to maybe um, keep an eye out for one. So what I'm going to do is just with that skew tip, I'm gonna cut under where the foot is and give it some more depth. That nice dark color also gives, tricks the eye into thinking that there's more depth there. So it's not 100% there yet, but you, I mean, to me, I feel like it is even just doing that little bit, it's giving your eye that impression that that foot is, is coming out just a little bit. So it's just, it's a, it's a slow process. I take, I stop, I look at it, and then I see if I want to add, if I want to undercut a little bit more with the burner, I will. If not, um, I can always go back to it. All right, so I'm going to just stay with the eye and the foot for now. I'll see what time is looking like. Man, it's going by pretty quick. And I'm going to switch over to, again, this um, shader. It's a flat shader. I'll just clean it off again. Sorry, it sounds probably pretty awful. Should have done this beforehand. And I'm going to keep this burner on pretty slow. I'll wait till it burns up. Another tool I always use is, which a lot of people do, I have a little just block where I can hold my burner. And just to scrape off any excess carving, carbon that builds up. And I also, like, let's say, you know, you get a phone call and you stop burning for a minute. It gets so hot and that carbon builds up. You just have to kind of just clean it off on the wood. And... And it's also kind of a test to see how hot your, your burner is burning. So right now, I could just see a nice light brown color. And that's pretty much the temperature I want. I might go a little bit lower. Because I don't want to go too hot. If I, I found that when you burn too hot, you can just eliminate any detail that you had in there. It'll just be gone in a second because you just scorched your piece of wood. So. With these birds, they're small, they're smaller than my hand. Um, it's really subtle, fine details. And I know a lot of bird carvers, that's what it's all about. Um, and I, I, I like that aspect of it. It's of taking my time. And again, for me, carving is a therapeutic thing. I'm in no rush to finish these. I like to just take my time and make sure everything is the way I want it to look like. So when I carve the eye, when I burn the eye, I already cut in kind of like, it's almost like making a stop cut when you're going to carve. That's the way I look at it. So I kind of made my stop cut with that skew tip. And now I'm gonna go in with this little shading tip and I'm gonna start just almost like making like a circular motion. I'm gonna just start coloring in the eye. And eventually what happens is that, and it's, I've heard guys call it burnishing. I guess that's the way you call it. It kind, of flat, it, it kind of tightens up the grain a little bit. It gives a little bit of a shine. So where, where all this texture and, and feather pattern is, I'm now gonna have this eye be a lot smoother and it's gonna help it stand out more when I, when I paint the, the finishing detail. That paint's gonna stand out and almost give it like its own shine. Um, I do use nail polish. Man, I guess I got a lot of nail stuff going on here. I got this thing and nail polish in the eyes. I'm, 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 let me into too much now, but um, uh, the, the nail polish at the end is going to help that shine come out too. So again, I'm, I'm going to turn the carving just so I can make sure that I, I, I get in there. Um, and I'm going to almost like push down on the eye because I want to round the eyeball out more. So it might be a little hard to see. I'll, I'll zoom it in a little bit, but I'm just going to kind of push around and give it that round shape. And it might take a couple passes. I, I don't like to hover too long because when it starts burning, you can't take that back. Right? You can always go back in and make it darker. Sometimes I've resorted to some sandpaper, but try to eliminate any extra steps if I can. All right. I know this could be, I don't want to be too boring with this, but I want this carbon to look good when it's done too. So I'm going to take my time. And I'll bring it up a little closer because on my end, I could see that it's the ball is a lot rounder than it was. Before it was almost like a, an oval shape. 
and now it's, it's starting to fill in a little bit. So oh, let me bring it up a little bit more. And it's a little hard to see on this, but you can see it. Now the eye is black and it's giving it a little more shape. And I love this part because for me, this is like, all right, now this guy's starting to come to life. The eye is one of the first things you see on any carving, right? Whether it be a face of a human or an animal, those eyes are such an important step. So that's why I like to do it first, take my time with it. All right, so I'm noticing that with this wood, and I have my burner plugged into a different outlet. I've noticed even that, that little variation in, within my house between outlets is crazy. Sometimes I'll have it set on one on one outlet and I need to put it on three at another. So I, that's why I always test it before I just start burning. I can't tell, tell you how many times I go to burn it and I just scorch it because I, I was a little, I rushed into it. So I'm gonna lower a little bit and I'm gonna do the same kind of concept on the foot. I'm, I'm gonna burnish it with the burner really slow. Because again, it's gonna have a different texture than the fur. So I like to use kind of like circular motions. I'm not staying in one spot too long. With burning, if you, if you hover along in one spot, it'll get very dark. But if you kind of just work your way around the carving, it's gonna give it a nice light color, not too dark. And I'll go back to it. If I want it to be blacker or darker, I'll go back to it. But right now, I'm just kind of going over everything almost like it was if I was painting it. You know, it's almost kind of like giving it like a primer. And you just kind of go over all the different spots. And from my carving, even though I did sand this, there's still some high spots that I'm, I'm seeing right now. And the burner is just gonna help me push it down. The other thing that I really love about these um, flat shading tips is even though they're not as sharp as the knife, I can use it to cut in a little bit. So right here in the toe, let's see if I can, well, look good enough here. Um, I'm going to use this to kind of cut in because this back toe is set behind. So I'm just, it's again, just giving it more depth and, and excuse me, I'm just tricking the eye. All right. So I'm just going to cut in with a little bit of a darker cut. And now it's going to give more depth to this, this um, toe that's back a little bit. So I'll keep going around and just kind of going through this. I will paint these sometimes if I can do it perfectly, which is rare, but if I can do it perfectly, I think the foot can come off great without having to paint it. And I could just use the burner as, as the final detail. I don't put any paint on it. Uh, that's the dream. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes I'd have to go in and, and clean it up with, the, with some paint too. So I'm gonna keep going around, all around the foot. I try to do the whole thing with these. Um, most of the time you're looking at the piece, you're looking at it straight on, but if it's on a wall and you see it from an angle, um, it's, you know, you want it to look good from the left, the right, from underneath. If you're looking down on it, you want to make sure everything has a purpose and everything's colored in or, and finished. Some of the earlier ones I did of these, I didn't think like that. And, it, you know, from, from the front on, it looks great. Like any relief carving, it looks great from the front, but then you look at it at the side and it looks all busted. So you gotta, I've been more mindful of that too, trying to carve all around it. Even though it's a thin piece, just trying to work it in there. I'm getting more comfortable power, power tools to help me with that. So as you can see, I'm gonna show you really quick, zoomed in, and that's a few minutes of carving. And it barely looks like I did anything. And I'm sure there's some gar carvers out there like, ah, oh, come on, turn that heat up and burn that damn thing. But I feel like, you know, just for me, it's pushing these wood fibers down. It's gonna give it that texture, almost like a shine. And by doing it slow, like if you do it fast, it's gonna just burn it in. You're gonna get a carbon buildup and it's, it's just not gonna look as appealing. It's not gonna look as natural. Um, so I'll just do this one last section. And even though I'm probably not gonna be able to finish the foot today like I wanted to, I can at least give you a rough idea of what it's going to look like. So I'm just gonna turn it, like I was saying before. And also the nice thing about these burners is 90% of the time you'll use the bottom of the tip, but guess what? The top of the tip is hot too. So it's okay to turn it and use the top to shade too. That's especially helpful in these like hard to reach areas. 
So I'm gonna go in and just kind of cover over here. Get one more spot and I'll give you another, sh I'll show you the other angle. The last thing I'll tell you is after you do the first pass with the, the low, low temperature, if you do raise the temperature, it's not gonna scorch it like you would if you just scorched it with the raw wood. So by burnishing it with a low temp, and now if I wanted to turn up the heat a little bit, it's gonna give me a lot more control when I burn it. And it's not gonna just scorch and give it like a, a charcoal look. It'll just kind of darken, fill in some of those areas that didn't maybe get enough color. Um, so that's, you know, that's just something that I found for me looks more appealing and helps with the process of finishing. All right, I'll come a little closer so you can see the, how it's starting to look. A little sloppy now, but it's gonna, once these feet are in place, it'll give it depth. The last thing that I will burn is the beak, because again, I'm going for that different texture. I want it to look different and make sure it's, it stands out apart from the rest of the carving. The beaks will be painted, but even by burnishing them with the burner, it gives the paint a different uh, different feel and look. Um, I guess I could show you one more trick that I do with these feathers. Um, as you can see, I've carved in these wing feathers, but I stop right before I get to a different, there's only, I am, sorry, my bird anatomy isn't great, but the, the different layers of, of wing feathers. So we have like the shoulder here, that that's, higher. Then the next layer is another set of feathers that aren't as defined. Uh, there's still some really fine little, almost like hair. Uh, and then the bottom wing feather, I'll cut in. If there's any uh, bird watchers out there, I'm sorry for butchering all the terminology. But what I'm going to do, and I can use this with the skew or the shading tip, I've used both. Um, I stopped before I got under here. Because if you use the, if I'm using the power tool, I'm gonna cut that line, I'm not gonna be able to control it. And it's gonna go over and kind of lose some of that detail that I carved in there. So I'll just take the burner and I'll usually actually define this line and I'll, I'll just go in there. It helps clean out any of the dust and, and wood that's still in there. And then the last thing that I'll do is I'll really slowly just extend the line so it looks like it's going under the other details. Um, and then just to really, finish that, I'll take the, I'll bring this up so you maybe can see it a little better. I'll take the tip and I'll go under and I'll give that last little bit of, of feather so it looks like it's going over the wing. So you kind of have to finish the tail feather up to a certain point and then you have to switch the direction of your tool to make it look like it's having a nice overlap. Again, these are all just tricks to the eye. There are really subtle aspects of things, but when you're working with wood that's this thin, it's all about how can you trick the eye to thinking that there's more depth than there is. Um, and that's um, kind of a, a basis of why I really like doing this, because when I get now to, you know, some of the, I think it's more interesting carving, like uh, in the round, I'm using the same techniques. It's just now I'm using it in a more three-dimensional way. And I I've, I've really can't stress enough how much I feel like doing pieces like these, even though they come out and they look beautiful, I think it's a really good way to practice getting, you know, training your eye for carving and, and doing details. Um, and that's why I continue to go back to it. I have a lot of fun carving them. And I, at the end, you get a really nice, nice product. So. Um, I hope I wasn't too fast or boring. I don't know if anyone has any questions, comments. Can you uh, Tom, how much picture um, this you... to your website when you're when you're done with it, so we can see the final product? Yeah, I'll probably it'll probably take about um, another week or so. Well, I'm just asking. Whenever you do, can you post it to your website so we can see the final product? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll thank you. Fine. I try to post most of my stuff that I, that I finish, but I'll definitely be posting this one. I'm, I'm really excited the way it's coming out now. So uh, I think it'll be cool. 
Uh, the one thing I, I should, I don't know if I, I, if I said this, but typically when I do this, I will, before I start doing any of the burning, I will have these leaves cut out. Um, but for the sake of the demo, I, you know, I didn't have time to get all, all the aspects of it carved. And I wanted to show you my, some of my process too. So it's kind of like a twofold thing. One, it was time, but two, I wanted to show you the process of the way I cut these out. So, but yeah, I'll definitely post that. Hey, Tom, Doug here. I'm curious, you mentioned uh, power carving and uh, basement in the same sentence. Have you uh, MacGyvered some kind of dust collection or did you buy something or you just make a mess? My basement is really dusty, Doug. Yeah, all right. No, I'm, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I have, um, in my garage, I have like, if I, I'll go out there and do some uh, power, or like if it's a nice day, like today in New Jersey, it was beautiful. I could have been out there in the deck carving, doing some power carving. Um, but yeah, I'll go out and I'll go in the garage. And I just, my parents gifted me a, a, a little tabletop dust collector. That's been nice. amazingly helpful. All right, cool. Yeah, I, I would, I, one day I would love to have a shop with a whole dust, dust collection. I think that's everyone's dream, right? Yeah. And Tom, a question in the chat. Where do you source the blanks from? Oh, um, these ones were from Michael's. Um, so again, I, I think I may have said at the start, this is a really, to do these types of projects, you're not really investing much in the wood. It's maybe $10, $12, depending on the side of the blank, size of the blank you get. I'm noticing too, that they're having more variation at Michael's. Um, typically they just have like these little round biscuits that you can get, but now I'm getting there. I saw one that was like three inches thick. Um, I've seen all different kinds. So I think it's, I think more hobbyists are getting into this, especially with pyrography. So it's just a cool way to, to capitalize that for carving. Hey, Tom. Yeah. This is Michael. Um, you power carve most of the, the 3D. What bits or um, bits or burrs are you using in your power carve? What kind of a power carve are you used? Oh, sure. Good question. So I just finally got some, uh, some carbide discs, which I'll use sparingly at the start to kind of rough out a little more. And man, I'll tell you what, it really saved me some time by doing that, having the, the blue the blue carbide. I'm still learning some of the names. Um, and then I, I found I use a lot of the diamond tips. Um, I, use, I, like, I have like three or four different size balls. And so I'll start with the larger one. Like I was explaining when I do the hair, I'll start with larger and go finer with the details. That's good too for undercutting. Um, I should mention too, I have these uh, the little flat undercutter. They're also diamond. Um, the one I have that I love, I, I need to replace too. I, I can't find it though. It's, it's real flat, thin, and I don't do any undercut, undercutting until I'm, I'm ready. Like, so I, I, like, for example, these, um, I can just show you on this one. Um, for the, these wing feathers, that was the last thing that I did. Uh, cutting under here and under the wing feathers, again, the last thing, because I don't want to, if, if I mess up and I have to go back just a little bit, once you undercut, you're committed to that cut. So, um, but yeah, I definitely use the diamond balls and the undercutter are like the most valuable things for me for this. Hey, Tom, one other question. How much time do you think you spend from start to finish on a carving like that? Um, depends on, I mean, just consistent on this. This will probably be about four, 30, maybe 30 hours with, you know, cutting it out in the scroll. But just, I, I'll, I'll put it all together. Designing, cutting on the scroll, um, carving, and then I use detailing with the, the burner. That takes quite a bit of time. Um, I didn't get to show you today, but I started to explain it's all the little cuts. And then also the painting, I spend a good deal of time on that. And I, I feel like every step is equally important. And I, I give as much time as, as cutting out in the scroll than I do to burning. Because I, you know, it's, even though I love doing the detail and some of that, it's so important to concentrate on all those steps. So yeah, about 30 hours, 30, 40. And after you paint, do you put some kind of lacquer on it or what do you use for a finish? 
Yeah, so with these, I'll either, depending on the type of bird or what I'm going for, I will use the um, Howard Speed and Wax. I really like that stuff. Um, and I've been starting to use Deft more, D-E-F-T, the lacquer spray. I think that stuff's been really great because it gives it uh, the matte finish. Um, or so even though I've used satin, that comes out all right too. But it, gives, it doesn't make it too shiny. Uh, and it, it doesn't change the color too much. And that's that's the thing that really would upset me with parties if it changes the color too much. But any suggestions I'm open to because I'm always looking to improve that. Any other questions for Tom today? You said you got started at a class. How long ago was that? Uh, about seven years ago. I still, I still, me and my dad still go to the American Wood Carving School. We go every Monday. It's, it's a great community. Um, and, you know, if you're in the area, you should definitely come by. Jerry does run classes every once in a while. He does advertise them. Um, but just like this community that, you know, Tom, Blake, and Dave are putting together, it's, it's just really awesome to have, to see what other carvers are up to and get different ideas. And, I, you know, that, that, that experience is in, invaluable. You know, it's really awesome to have that. So. I really appreciate you guys putting this together. Tom, if there's nothing else, um, I just wanted to come back on and say thank you for coming on today. That's uh, quite tedious work there. And, you know, I don't know if uh, there's a lot of people that's going to spend that amount of time to do that much detail on a carving. So I uh, definitely admire your work uh, and I appreciate uh, the time that you spend. Uh, make sure you go out on Etsy and check out his page there. I think a lot of the carvings that he showed is out there on Etsy. Uh, and again, you can find him on Instagram and Facebook. So check him out. I uh, just want to let you all know kind of what we have coming up uh, next week. CCA member Kevin Applegate is going to be coming on. Uh, he's going to be carving a demonstration on a hillbilly. Uh, he'll be providing the, the uh, pattern for that. So uh, we'll we'll post that in social media this week. Uh, if you all want to follow along, you're welcome to or you'll have that pattern. We're going to have three or four different variations of that. So uh, we'll throw that out there so that you can kind of see what it is he's going to be doing. And then again, you can follow along. And I know Kevin's had some classes uh, or workshops that he's been doing. So I would say he'll probably have another one coming up. Uh, nothing scheduled that I know of at this, this time, but uh, he will have some more in the future. Uh, after Kevin, I'll just run through the list real quick. Again, Dave Francis will be on after Kevin, uh, Rich Snyder, uh, Roger Bean, Ray Meyer, Steve Tomaszek. Joe Yu, Chris Hammock, uh, and Brett Andrews. So that'll kind of take us through the mid to end of April. I think we have one date open during that time frame that we're still looking for somebody to do a presentation. Uh, so if you know of anybody that's interested, have them reach out to Tom or I uh, or Dave uh, Levy and uh, have them sign, sign up with us and we'll get them on the schedule. Um, once again, we'll be doing a giveaway. We're going to post that in social media this week. Uh, it's just basically an international association of wood carvers prize pack. Uh, and we're going to be doing a newsletter. So we're going to be gathering some information uh, and releasing the newsletter starting in March on March the 1st. Uh, that'll share some of this information with you all, along with some other things that we have uh, in the works that we've been working on. Uh, but make sure you go out and sign up for the, uh, the prize pack that we'll be doing a giveaway next week. Uh, and again, uh, Tom, thanks for coming on today. Thank you all for joining us. Again, Kevin Applegate will be on next week, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, thank you all for taking your time out of your day, and we'll see you all next week on the International Association of Wood Carvers. Thank you all. Thank you very much.